Hey everyone, Tesla Tom here. Thank you so much for joining us today on Ludicrous Feed. I'm sitting currently in our 2023 Tesla Model Y rear-wheel drive from the Gigafactory Shanghai and I'm here to discuss with you guys software update 2023.20.7. Uh, super exciting release because it actually coincides with the FSD uh, Beta Build 11.3.6. Now, of course, we don't actually have FSD beta availability here in Australia, but uh, it's a bit of a landmark because this is the first time we've actually got a software build that is the same as the FSD uh, beta build in the US and uh, Canada. So here's the Tesla Fi website showing us that in Australia, there are actually 251 installs of uh, 2023.20.7 at the time of this video. And of course, I'm happy to say that this vehicle is one of them but unfortunately none of the vehicles can access the FSD beta functionality yet in Australia. Now of course I don't have FSD capability installed in my car, but there are examples of other people with this build who already have the FSD capability software, but are unable to access FSD beta in Australia. But I do think we're getting close and I'll discuss a little bit more about that in one second. But uh, for the time being, I just want to quickly plug uh, Joa and their new microfiber towels. So my screen is not looking very clean at the moment, so I will uh, give it a quick clean in screen clean mode. That's how you get there. And just this using this microfiber towel. And look, I do plug Joa quite a bit because I do believe in them. I think they're a great company that produce great products of all the aftermarket accessories. Uh, Joa certainly ranked very highly in terms of quality and customer support. So there's the Joa microfiber towels, just one of many products available. Uh, and there's another one, Joa uh, wireless charging mount for your Tesla Model 3 Model Y. So uh, check them out. I'll leave a link to the product in the video description below. Uh, using my coupon code, TeslaTom5 will get you 5% off store-wide. Thank you, Joa. Okay, let's get back to the release notes for 2023.20.7. Uh, we've gone through these before in a previous uh, firmware update. So uh, tire service mileage, uh, control service to see how many miles it's been since your last tire service. And you can also reset them once you uh, rotate, replace or swap them. And then the text size, uh, large text size feature is now available in all supported languages, which is great. So to update your settings, go to controls, display, text size. Okay, so back to my discussion about 2023.20.7. Like I said, this is the first time uh, we've got an update that coincides or contains the uh, FSD beta build. On this occasion, it is 11.3.6. There you go, Tesla Fire showing that right there. So what does this mean for Australia? Okay, so like I said, we can't access FSD beta just yet in Australia. However, I think we are getting close. And I think the absence of any concrete proof, we just have to look at the signs, right? So this is one sign, the fact that the FSD beta build is now inbuilt into this vehicle. Now, up until recently, Tesla Australia were advertising positions on their careers page for test drivers to help improve Tesla's autopilot system by operating and becoming experts on data collection vehicles across the country for up to three months duration. So this could be another sign that the FSD timeline is progressing in this country. Now, those positions are no longer available to view. So whether they've been filled, I'm not sure. Now, in the wake of data breaches from Tesla recently, they are now very clear on their commitment to your privacy. It's spelled out very clearly that they do not sell your data to anyone for any purpose, period. They use data to improve and create new safety and convenience features. They apply precision anonymization like blurring to external data camera. And unless there is a safety critical event, camera data is not linked to your VIN. So basically Tesla is saying to us they don't really care about the individual as such, but they are really collecting data to improve the safety of their vehicles as a fleet, particularly in relation to future full self-driving features. So another sign that full self-driving might be close in Australia is that when you install 2023.20.7, you are presented with two new data sharing clauses that you need to accept. The first one is include start and end drive data. By default, autopilot analytics do not include the start and end of your drive. However, you can opt in to share it and help Tesla improve features like FSD beta, smart summon and park assist, particularly in car parks and driveways. For your privacy, this data is not associated with your account or VIN. So that's exciting to see the term FSD beta in an Australian vehicle. And the second one is include data when parked. By default, autopilot analytics do not include data when you are parked. However, you can opt in to share it and help Tesla improve features like auto present door upon approach, auto shift out of park and more. For your privacy, this data is not associated with your account or VIN. Now, currently we don't have the smart shift function in Model 3 Model Y as it exists in the new refresh Model S Model X, but you never know with Tesla, it might be coming in the near future. 
Another sign is that the Tesla referral program, which you all know has been updated recently, uh, when you go to redeem, you can now actually uh, redeem your credits for uh, enhanced autopilot in the upgrade section right there. So there you go, three months of enhanced autopilot for 8,000 credits. Uh, to access that, all you need to do is refer one person and you'll get 10,000 credits. So you can potentially get three months of enhanced autopilot for free if you redeem those credits. Now in the US, this is actually uh, three months of FSD. So the natural extension of that is once we have FSD in Australia, I reckon there'll be an option for FSD uh, redemption using uh, referral credits. Uh, as you can see, I've got quite a bit of credit at the moment, thanks to generous viewers. So don't worry, once FSD drops, I will definitely be exchanging uh, my credits for FSD so that I can show you what it's like in Australia, or at least in my part of the world, uh, with FSD enabled for sure. But currently, I won't actually be redeeming uh, Enhanced Autopilot with my credits. Why? Well, I've actually had FSD capability uh, in Australia with our X2019 Tesla Model 3. Uh, I've produced a video in the past comparing uh, Basic Autopilot, which is included with all cars in Australia, uh, versus Enhanced Autopilot versus the FSD beta capability. So yes, I think the best feature of Enhanced Autopilot is actually the auto lane change. It works really well on um, uh, long drives. If you're on the highway trying to pass, uh, you know, like a big truck or a slow vehicle, then you don't have to necessarily disengage autopilot uh, to get past another truck. So uh, check out those videos I've done in the past. Uh, auto park, so-so, summon, great sort of party trick, one-off. Um, smart summon if you've got a tight garage maybe, but uh, I don't have a tight garage, so it doesn't worry me. Navigate on autopilot, again, hit and miss with uh, regards to uh, freeway exits and also uh, auto lane change. I think it's a bit hit and miss myself. So like I said, best feature is auto lane change if you want to take a plunge for that $5,000 purchase of enhanced autopilot or try it out with your referral credit if you've got it or if you buy a new Tesla Model 3 Model Y you get $750 off with the referral link and also three months of enhanced autopilot as well so good time to try out for yourself. Is it worth the extra $5,000 or $10,000 all up for the full self-driving capability? You get all functionality of basic autopilot and enhanced autopilot and the traffic light and stop sign control. I've of course tried the traffic light and stop sign control in my previous video so of course go and check those out but Stopping at a red light or uh, a stop sign automatically is nice. You don't have to disengage autopilot. Uh, the going green is a little bit slow, I've got to say, off the mark at a traffic light. So when I used to have it, I used to press the accelerator anyway. So kind of negating the point of the traffic light and stop sign control uh, functionality. Um, certainly not for an extra $5,000. I don't think it's worth paying that to get this extra feature. Of course, the promise is that you get auto steer on city streets. That is, of course, the full self-driving feature that we're all waiting for here in Australia. So I'm actually going to put it out there and say I don't recommend buying full self-driving capability for $10,000 in Australia. I don't think it's worth the money currently. I think eventually when FSD does release, then yes, it might be worth the 10 grand. But at the moment, this is really not a good purchase. Uh, this is potentially a good purchase. But then again, I've actually done a few road trips now. Uh, to Canberra, to the Gold Coast with the family without enhanced autopilot, just on basic autopilot, and it's honestly been fine. Uh, it's not a big deal to disengage autopilot to get past big trucks or slower vehicles and then re-engage really quickly. So for the extra $5,000, yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a touch and go whether it's worth it for the uh, extra features such as auto lane change for the freeway. All right, everyone, you've been watching me, Tesla Tom. Thanks for watching today on Ludicrous Feed uh, with regards to software update 2023.20.7 with that FSD build. 11.3.6 uh, um, again stay tuned to the channel and also stay tuned to our weekly live streams where we uh, look out for any more signs that fsd is coming to australia you know tesla keep promising or certainly elon musk keeps promising us it's going to come to other markets every year uh, maybe 2023 is the year i don't know but we'll certainly keep a lookout uh, to see if there are any changes so stay tuned thanks everyone until the next ludicrous feed video happy charging